This section of the video will explore the history and evolution of the flipped classroom. The flipped classroom is a historical evolution of some of the common classroom practices from the past. Bishop and Verlager, 2013, and Helgeson, 2015, both referred to the practice of teachers assigning reading as homework so the students could come to class and discuss the material as a non-technology form of the flipped classroom. Another step that was taken before the flipped classrooms was the use of computers in the classroom. The use of computer-assisted language learning, or CAL, started in the 1980s, and technology-enhanced language learning, or TEL, began in the 1990s. This is according to Dudney and Hockley in 2007. So, English teachers were used to assigning homework to be used in activities in class and the use of the computer. With the advent of MIT's OpenCourseWare, or OCW, in 2001, the types of websites that would be needed were made more available. This is according to Bishop and Verlager, 2013. The final historical step that led to the advent of the flipped classroom was the beginning of the Khan Academy in 2006, according to Bishop and Verlager in 2013. The start of the Khan Academy and the storage and free sharing of educational material helped to alleviate the need for teachers to have to produce material to flip the classroom. The flipped classroom was first documented in use in 2007 by Bergman and Sams, which was written about by Bergman and Sams in 2011. They took the lecture portion of their chemistry class, made it into a video, and had the students watch it as homework, and then had discussions and experiments in class in lieu of the lectures. The NMC Horizon Report for Higher Education in 2015 reported that the flipped classroom spread to middle schools and high schools and then got picked up by universities like Columbia, Villanova, and Harvey Mudd, who initiated programs to use the flipped classroom. BART 2013 surveyed teachers and found that 27% were using some form of the flipped classroom. This number was supposed to increase to over 50% by the end of this year. The flipped classroom developed the most in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, or STEM areas, according to the Horizon Report. The Horizon Report also noted that the flipped classroom was lagging in development in Asia and the field of English as a foreign language. The flipped classroom has become more and more prevalent in foreign language classrooms in the United States. Johnson and March 2015 found links between improved use of grammar and flipped learning in the classes. Say, Who, and Merrick 2016 found that students scored significantly higher on post-tests than the control group. They also noted that students were motivated to use English in an EFL setting. The students noted immediate feedback, interaction, and active engagement. However, the classroom has to be aligned between the pre-class segment and the post-class segment to allow for the learning ob objectives to be met, according to McLaughlin, White, Yuryev, and Kanova, 2016. The use of the flipped classroom has started to be studied as a tool to help students learn English in Asian countries' universities, using small elective classes, which have shown promising results from the students. There has been research in Saudi Arabia by al Zarani in 2015, Taiwan, Hung, 2015, Turkey, Kilikaya, 2015, South Korea, Sun, 2015, and China with Webb, Doman, and Pusi in 2014. First, Korea, 2015, described links between the flipped classroom and Bloom's taxonomy of educational objectives. Al Zarani, 2015, found that by flipping the classroom and working on creating type activities in the classroom, that students improved their test scores. Mehring, 2016, 
noted that there was an increase in active learning when the flipped classroom was employed. The flipped classroom was also promoted collaboration, interaction, self-reflection, and confidence in the students. Flipped learning helped increase students' learning auto autonomy over five-week courses, according to Han in 2015. Say, Wu, and Merrick in 2016 noted that the students were motivated to learn English through this technique. Young, Eep, and Lee, 2016, found that the flipped classroom seemed to work the best for students who have either a visual or kinesthetic learning style. The dominant learning style has to be taken into account when designing the course, according to Young et al. Looking into the future is not an exact science. However, to attempt to gauge where the flipped classroom will be in the future, I will explore some of the problems that the flipped classroom and possible ways to overcome them in the future. First, the material that is being flipped out of the classroom has to be engaging, or else the students will not want to complete the necessary pre-work before coming to class, according to Kavshnina Martinko, 2016, and Zainuddin and Ataran in 2015. The second issue that will change through the flipped classroom is the role of the teacher, according to Kavishnina and Martinko, 2016. The standard role of the lecturer will be replaced by a facilitator. This shift will cause some problems for teachers who have championed the traditional classroom, but it will shift the education to a more student-centered environment. The third concern for the future is time. Kashnina and Martinko, 2016, found that making material is time-consuming for the teacher. However, they noted that this time consumption is mainly in getting started. Zenudin and Atran, 2015, also noted that time is a constraint for the students. The concern being that there is the lecture content as homework, it would take more time for the students to prepare to come to class. One suggestion that has been made by Lu, Wee, and Gao, 2016, was to incorporate multiple leveled micro courses that students were placed into by the teacher based on their level. This concept means that the higher level students could spend less time with material that was too easy for them and the low-level students would not waste time trying to figure out material that was too high for their level. Taking this to the next step to save teachers time, what if there were a diagnostic test which sorted the learners into their levels for each lesson? Because of the complexity of learning languages and the different ways different teachers approach different aspects of the languages, some learners might be coming to the class with a higher understanding of some topics and lower in others. With the diagnostic test guiding the way, the learner's learning would be personalized to each learner. This is like applying the idea of learning analytics to the flipped classroom.